The white flag is raised. And then off in the Savills chase of a high standard. Nine runners, three miles, 17 fences, and it's conflated winner of the race last year who takes them onto the first from Galapin Deschamps. Jerry Kalam over in third. Slight mistake, I Maximus. The Ferry House National Hero as they go towards the second, their first ditch, conflated. Galapin Deschamps, written positively today, followed by Jerry Kalam. A Plutar, appreciate it next, and then I Maximus Capadano, Churchstone Warrior, the outside of the party at the rear of the field. Going towards the third, second last fence in the back straight this time. And it's conflated, landing in front from Galapin Deschamps, who's followed by market rival Jerry Colomb. Out wide is appreciated, then a Plutar. I am Maximus, Churchstone, Warrior, and Cappadano, fence number four, end of the back straight. Wide apart, conflated, Galapin Deschamps, followed by Jerry Colomb. Then appreciated up Lutar, the returning 2020 winner. The back three, I am Maximus, Cappadano, and Churchstone, Warrior. Second ditch. Fence number five, conflated up and over by two lengths to Galapin Deschamps. And third, the prolific Jerry Colomb, the big winner at Down Royal, and then appreciated at Lutar racing together. The J.P. McManus own pair, Capadano, the quartered cap on the outside of I Maximus with the back mark with Churchstone Warrior. As they go away from fence number six, good run to number seven. Fence in front of the stands, and it is conflated. And Sam Ewing turning in in a lead of a length over Galapin Deschamps. And Paul Townend, and third is Jerry Colomb and Jack Kennedy. Fourth is Appreciated and Sean O'Keefe, and then up Lutard and Rachel Blackmore. On the running rail is I Maximus and Jody McGarvey, and then Capadano, Brian Hayes, the back marker. Is Church Stone Warrior and Michael O'Sullivan. Final fence next time. And the Savills Grade 1 chase, little changes in the order, conflated, leads passes the first time from Galapin Deschamps and Jerry Colomb, and then appreciated. I am Maximus moves to join up Plutar with the final couple with the circuit to race, Capadano and Churchstone Warrior. Another 10 fences left to jump. And it is conflated, joined by Galapin Deschamps and the quartered colors. Tracked away to fences eight and nine at halfway by Jerry Colomb and then appreciated. I am Maximus up the inside of Aplutar and then Capadano and Churchstone Warrior. The first of two away from us, conflated. And Galapin Deschamps, a mistake by appreciated. Sean O'Keefe did well to stay in the play. Preceded by Jerry Colomb. Then I Maximus the white cap up, Plutarus two behind, Capadano and Churchstone Warrior. Skew with in the air at that was I Maximus. As they pass the halfway stage, another eight fences left to jump. No changes in the first three. Conflated leads round the turn, Galapin Deschamps and Jerry Kalam. Followed after a break of two and a half lengths, appreciated contesting the fourth with I Maximus in between those two as Apluta, and then Capadano and Churchstone Warrior. A little more spaced out than previously. It's conflated, who landed a length and a half to two lengths in front of Galapin Deschamps and Jerry Colomb, then appreciated. I am Maximus the inside of Apluta, and then Capadano and Churchstone Warrior. A circuit under their belts. Going now to the next plane fence before the next ditch. And it is conflated and joined the lead still from Galapin Deschamps. And then Jerry Colomb and appreciated I Maximus Aplutar Capadano and Churchstone Warrior. Inside their final mile, going to the next ditch on the far side. It's conflated and Galapin Deschamps continuing wide apart. Jerry Colomb in between them, and then appreciated. Aplutar. Next is Capadano. I am Maximus appeared to hit 
a flat spot there and landing at the previous fence and then Churchstone Warrior. Now four fences left to jump, going to the last on the far side. And the Savills chase is conflated, continuing to lead the field from Galapan Deschamps and Jerry Colomb in between them. Then appreciated, I am Maximus booted into that. Then Capadano, Aplutar and Churchstone Warrior. Turning out of the back straight with three fences left to jump. They're heading for the final ditch. It's conflated Galapan Deschamps, less than a length between them. Three parts of a length back to Jerry Colomb, and then I am Maximus, who's up into fourth, ahead of Appreciated, then Capadano, up Lutar is weakened. At the rear of the field is Churchstone Warrior. Two left to jump, and it's conflated by three parts of a length to Galapan Deschamps. Moving to just go third is I am Maximus. Now being stoked up, Jerry Colomb. Galapan Deschamps landed in the lead from Conflated. Jerry Colomb is driven hard in third and gets a crack. Then appreciated, I am Maximus has come under pressure and then Capadano leaving behind. A Plutar and Churchstone Warrior into the straight with one fence left and coming wide. Galapan Deschamps and Paul Townen out on the left wing on the far side is Conflated and Sam Ewing. Jerry Colomb is trying to keep with them for Jack Kennedy. The final fence and it's Galapan Deschamps who's gone clear from Jerry Colomb. A mistake by Conflated has lost Sam Ewing but it's Galapan Deschamps returning to the top of the staying division in the Savills. The Gold Cup winner is back for Paul Townen and Willie Mullins. A sight for sore eyes. Jerry Colomb and Capadano judge for the second and third. And then I, Maximus, appreciated. Aplutar Sam Ewing's up on his feet after his tumble from conflated. Churchstone Warrior failed to complete. Rain is falling here at Leopard Sand. I don't think it's going to bother Paul Townend too much because he's just been on board one of the best performances we've ever seen, I think, here at Leopard Sand. Paul Gallopin, Deschamps, anybody who had a question mark about this horse today, I think, got their answer there, didn't they? Yeah, I think so. Um, and he, look, he had questions to answer after the last couple of days, but uh, all credit to, to Willie for getting him back and the owners for, obviously, he was disappointed the last few days and letting Willie do what he wanted with him. Clearly you were going to be positive with him today, or at least ride him handy. Were you comfortable at all stages of the race? All stages. I love the way he took on the first, and from there on, uh, I was very happy on him. I was, he, he was happy, I was happy, and it was pretty simple, actually, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, it's not often you have the luxury of being able to coast on from the last fence in a race like that here at Leopardstown, particularly one that we built up as one of the best Savills for many years. Exactly, and you know, he had, he, as I said, he had, he had questions to answer, and, and I think he'd done it today. Yeah. Paul, no fast or slow today, but based on what this horse has done there, how confident or optimistic would you be about taking him on again? Fast or slow, uh, you know, he's he, he, he probably deserves more credit than he's getting. Um, so he's he's definitely going to be a force to be reckoned with in the future, but uh, if this gallop in the Shams turns up again, you know, he'll be hard beat wherever he goes. Yeah, how much did you enjoy that today? It was a right up near, it's certainly, I think, his best ever performance. It fair? was up there just because, you know, when the big guns get beat, the pressure was kind of on and um, it was a relief as much as anything, I suppose, that he's back, yeah. And talk to us about the reception. The crowd knew, I think, they'd seen something special. I there, think so, it? I think so. Look, we're lucky in this country, we have such good horses and such a good sport and the, the people appreciate it. Well, it was great to watch. Well done you, thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. Willie Mullins is with us now after Gallopin Deschamps' demolition job in the Savills Chase. Willie, you've trained some great horses down the years, many of them household names, but not too many of them have ever put up a performance like that. I mean, what's your reaction to what he did there? It, it was a huge performance. I suppose I didn't, um, you know, I was looking at them coming over the third last, the second last, and thinking everything is still in the race, and, you know, that could give him a race. And then Paul just opened him up, and he just galloped, and I could see Paul about six straight out looking, where am I going to jump the last right, left, and change his tack, and, and got him over the last. He just made sure he jumped it, and... Um, and then just kept galloping up the street. He, he put what appeared to be a very good field of horses to bed in a few, the matter of a few strides, you know. After, after doing it the hard way, up the front the whole way, uh, you know, he jumped Paul, 
wanted to change tactics. They wanted to jump out in front, give him plenty of daylight, let him enjoy himself down over the first and see what happens. And it worked. You could, when I saw him jumping the first, I was very happy that Paul had probably made the right decision. We didn't know. We still had two or nearly three miles to go at that stage, but um, the horse enjoyed himself, and that was key to it. Yeah, I know you guys held him up in the Gold Cup when he yeah. won, but you won't be going back to those tactics at a match after seeing I, what I, he did today, will you? No, I, I think we'll probably just let him uh, enjoy himself from now on. You know, he's, he's able to do it. We, we could see that he can do it the hard way in these conditions and still be galloping at the end. I know the likes of Ruby and David Casey and a lot of the team at home have great faith that he would bounce back from the punches then defeats, but could you have envisaged him winning in the manner he did today? No, I mean, I came today and we had four runners eventually in the race, and uh, if any one of the four had won, it wouldn't have surprised me. You know, I think a lot of the four of them, uh, but now, I mean, this fella just looks to be a, um, a class ahead of those. Yeah. And they're, they're good horses. As Ruby pointed out, the John Durkin being moved back this year is what allowed you to come here today. That has worked yeah, out rather well, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, you know, people, we're, we're, everyone's been saying for the last 20 years, if the, we all know it's too near Christmas, so our good horses run the John Durkin, so they miss Christmas, so we're having a great record on the Savile. But by getting it away, those John Durkin horses, who are the top-class chasers in Ireland, get a chance now to run at Christmas, and that's, uh, you know, and that paid off for us today. Hopefully we'll see him back here at the Dublin Racing Festival before Cheltenham, will yeah, we? Yeah, we could. I mean, uh, it, it's a fantastic race, the Irish Gold Cup, and um, there's every chance we could. We'll see how he comes out of that race. I'll chat to Paul, see what he thinks. Uh, but um, you know, it could make for a fantastic um, Dublin Racing Festival Gold Cup. Absolutely, especially if Faster Slow is there. He was obviously an absentee today, but would you relish that rematch tonight? Right? Uh, not particularly, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we... Um, <clears throat> it, it, it'd be a tough race with him in there. I could imagine him now. He'd have been stalking us the whole way around. Uh, it, it's going to be good. I just didn't want to miss this race. I didn't know how our fellow was going to run. He hadn't been working like that at home. But I felt if we skipped this and then only had the Dublin Racing Festival race, the Irish Gold Cup left, and he got a stone bruise a week before or something, then we'd have no run. So I said, let's you know, roll the dice here, see what happens. Right. Delighted we did. Hey, that's spectacular. Yeah. Just before we let you go, down at Limerick, Gaelic Warrior delivered the goods once again. What was your verdict there? I mean, to me, he put in some exhibition of jumping. If anyone wants to watch what a steeplechaser looks like, go and replay that race. I thought it was fantastic. And then uh, the two, my two, uh, my son and my, my <laughs> nephew trying to kill one another going down to the second last fence. I don't, I, I don't know what Patrick said to... Um, <laughs> Danny, but I imagine they were, wouldn't be coming home in the same car anyhow. Um, but I thought Danny was riding his horse and he had to try and go for grade one glory on his horse. But um, anyhow, it'll be it'll make fun for uh, for this evening uh, when we're disseminating the whole thing. Anyhow. <laughs> He's a hugely exciting horse. I mean, could he follow the same route as Gallop and Deschamps? But he looks in that league. Who knows? I mean, I mean, fact to file earlier on and spectacular yeah, as well. You know, they're just they're all horses you'd love to have. So we're very lucky to have them. It's been great to watch them, I must say, Willie. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> well done. Thank you very much. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.